you have the floor. Thank you. So hi, I'm Daniel, this is Jaromir. We both work from Fortran Micro, and we're very glad to be here in real life for this conference after two years of pandemic, and we'll present you the result of our investigation that we name Operation Gambling Puppet. So this is the outline of the talk. So we will see some infection, ve infection vectors, malware, discussion, discussion, targeting, infrastructure, etc., etc. So it all started with a sample from uh, belonging to the x not malware family. So it targets Linux uh, operating system. And we found that the command and control server domain name was familiar to us. And actually it belonged to some investigation we did two years ago named Operation DRB Control. So this was a targeted uh, attack, so it was interesting to us. So we, we, we searched a bit more, we pivoted on that. So we found more samples. We found different malware families. Then we found out different platforms were targeted, so actually Windows and Macintosh. Uh, we figured out some of the targets of this attack, some infection vectors, etc., etc. So we had a lot of material, and we decided we could do some paper. So this talk is the result of this investigation. So let's discuss the infection vectors. The first one is a chat application that was offered through a website that you can see here in the screenshot. On the left, uh, the chat application was called Mimi, which actually in Chinese means secret. So this uh, chat application was um, advertised as being like secure chat application. And as you can see on the bottom of the screenshot, it was offered for the Windows on Mac platform. On the website, is written in Chinese. So when we look at the, the application itself, we found out it was written uh, using the Electron JavaScript framework, which is based on the Node.js runtime. So this means it can run on different platforms without changing the, the code, actually. You just uh, need to recompile it. And, um, sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry. And then, uh, so the, there is a, um, one file that references the malicious payload, actually, electron main.js file. And so if, if you can look at the, the excerpt of this, this code, depending on the platform, it will run either the USO private executable in the devs folder, or if it's Darwin, which means actually macOS platform, it will run Darwin X64. On the bottom of the screenshot, you can see the content of the devs folder on Windows platform. And actually, you can recognize what we just saw, actually, the usual way of loading some plugin malware family, which is some uh, legitimate executable that will load uh, through DLL side loading, some malicious DLL that will actually decrypt the, the payload, which is the third file. So if we summarize this, the target will visit the chat application website, download the installer, and depending on the platform, it will run either Plugix or some malware family in macOS platform that we called ORAT, that we will see later. One thing to note about this um, website is that you could register through it, uh, either by email or by phone, and they were limiting the prefixes, phone numbers, to some countries. So this gives an idea of what are the targets uh, for this threat actor. So you can see that there is US and Canada, and all the others are countries from Southeast Asia. The second uh, infection vector we found is a bit more complicated. Uh, it all starts with the threat actor that will uh, first find a, a web legitimate website, and it will exploit a persistent cross-site scripting vulnerability. So it will inject some JavaScript code in that website. That code will be triggered when the target visits the website. And in this case, what the code does is it will load a third-party JavaScript code from a third-party server, which we call here, here XSS platform. It will also load some PHP script. And then after this code is run, it will redirect the, the target to a final website, which will offer some fake Flash installer. So if the target then falls for this viewer and install the Flash, fake installer, it will get delivered by a, a malware. We saw this uh, technique being used for different malware families. This is why I don't specify which malware is delivered, because there were multiple ones. Actually, the, the, the cross site scripting uh, display contains some code to display a message. So you can see here the message. You can see it's written in Chinese. So the, if you translate it, it will be just saying that the Flash version is too old. This uh, was. Uh, kind of surprising for us that this Flash uh, trick is still used because Flash is supposed to be end of life since the tw end of 2020. And then we found out that in China there is an exception to this rule. And um, actually Adobe allowed uh, a third party editor to still offer uh, the Flash installer in China. So this is 
interesting something that we learned. Uh, so the script will do some checks, display this message, and then call the PHP script on redirect to this website. So this is what the final website looks like, again, written in Chinese, offering the Adobe Flash Player. We, we think that this PHP script probably collects some statistics about the victims. On, in those, that third party uh, server that was hosting the JavaScript on PHP script, we'll, we looked a bit around and found like an authentic, authentication panel. It can be written in Chinese, so you can see in the top left the XSS ping tie message, which means XSS platform. And on the bottom, some message, which is some disclaimer actually in Chinese, stating that this is a private access platform and that there are other free online XSS platforms around. So what we believe is this platform is some kind of uh, vulnerability platform that allows actually the, the threat actor to scan for cross-site scripting vulnerabilities in remote legitimate websites. Uh, we found that two legitimate websites were exploited. We could identify the first one, uh, which was a website, news website uh, aimed at the Chinese community of a big US city. Unfortunately, we could not identify the second website because it was an IP address, that, uh, so no domain name, and it was offline at the time of we, when we checked. And the third infection vector is a DMG file, which is some kind of installer for Mac platform. Desktop, Mac, desktop, actually not, not phone, Mac. And then it contains some pre-installed scripts. So the, here you can see the script is very simple. It will just like download some payload from a remote website and execute it. And uh, we can note that the, the file was named bitget.dmg. And we found that bitget is a Singapore-based cryptocurrency exchange application. So this probably means that it has some relation to the targets. So we let Jerome discuss the malware now. So in this section, we will talk about malware toolkit. So this threat actor was very active and they used like all three major, uh, they used malware for all three major uh, platforms, which means like for Windows, Linux, and Mac. Some of these malware families are known or has been previously used either by some other groups or they are publicly available on GitHub, for example. So this is the list of the known families on Windows. In this presentation, we will not go through the known families. We will focus on, on the new ones, the, the custom ones. But we plan to publish sooner or later the paper and uh, blog post where will be some details even about related to these families. So for known Windows malware families, they're like PlugX. We have heard about it today too. Ghost Red, Cobalt Strike, and others. Quasarat was mentioned. For the new families, which some of them we, we will talk about today, was the Puppet Loader, Puppet Downloader, ORED, another MFC Downloader, and HelloBot. We will talk a little bit later about them. Under Linux, known malware families like Xnode, HelloBot, PuppyRed, Reptile Rootkit, hiding like one of these uh, previously mentioned uh, families. And for Mac, we found like a one compiled under Mac OS, which is called ORED, originally written in Golang, but it can be compiled under different platforms. So let's start with, I would say, the most interesting malware family used by this threat actor, which we named Puppet Loader. Why Puppet Loader? Because there had been like string, as you can, you can see in this small screenshot below, there had been like a string directly found in, in, within the malware, so the author, authors themselves call it Puppet Loader. It is a custom malware. It has five stages. The lightest stage is the backdoor itself, and it uses for encryption somehow flawed RC4 implementation. So when I talk about these stages, so it starts with stealthy loader, which loads in a stealthy way a dropper. This dropper drops basic loader, which is the third stage. Then it drops one BMP file, like bitmap file, but in, in, uh, to this bitmap file, there is attached, there are attached some encrypted data with core and another bitmap file with another attached data with the, the another stage. Then the basic loader decrypts and loads this core from the bitmap with core and the core decrypts and loads the main client. So these are all these five stages. 
I mentioned that there is something with flawed RC4 implementation. So how, how, how it was implemented? So in the right, there is, there is the code uh, for pseudorandom uh, generation. And uh, the most important part is the swap functions, swap function. And the swap function is implemented in the, in the five steps in, in the table on the left. It's kind of in a strange way, like they have like temporary value, then they assign the sum of like two locations because it wants to, it wants to swap locations from table with offset i and j. So it, it uses some sum, then some, uh, some subtraction and so on. So if you want to go like step by step, so in the left there will be the table which I shown you before, and in the right table are the actual values. So you can see on the right there is originally SI and SJ values. SI is red, SJ is green, and after all these five operations or the steps, the, the red should be in the right column and the, the green should appear in the left column. So after the, the first operation, you can see that temp value is sum of these values. After the step two, SI equals to sum of the values. After the third step, temp is equal to S, SI. Then, then, uh, they, then the second column, the SJ, is assigned the original SI value. And in the last step, which, which you can see that, that these two, two values are swapped. So it seems to work. What happens if I and J are equal? So in the first step, temp is assigned the double, the double value of I because I points to the same place as J. So SI plus SJ equals two times SI. In the second step, SI is assigned this temp value. So the SI, SJ, and temp is now equal, all of them are equal to the same value, which is two times SI. Then it, gets then it gets subtracted. So suddenly temp value is zero. And later everything is zero. So what, so what happens for the internal stage of the RC4 cipher? R this internal stage should be permutation of all the numbers from zero to FF. And each number should be there exactly once. So you can see here in the, in, with this arrow, the, the left is, sorry, the left is the stage before and uh, the right is after. So there is like one zero here and one zero stays here. But also when, when it wants to swap this value 2C, so after the swapping, this 2C becomes zero. So suddenly there are two zeros. And the longer this process runs, the more zeros appear in this internal stage. And after long run, there are almost all zeros. So the, the encryption like doesn't work. So we have seen this, this weird implementation or this flawed implementation also in like two more malware families. One was this puppet downloader and one was like some user land rootkit from tiger plug. Now let's talk a little bit about puppet, puppet loader and talk a little bit more about these five stages. So the first stage was the stealthy loader. So it hooked several functions from NTDLL and then also used some undocumented NTDLS functions to avoid recursive hooking problems. These are like RTL push, pop, and get frame. This frame is some data structure pushed on the stack, and it contains some pointers to, to some buffers. It can be the buffer with the payload, buffer with name of the files, size of the payload, and there can be some opened handles, and so on. Then the, the loader tries to load like one legitimate, func legitimate DLL. In this case, it, it's called ASIC field, the DLL. It's some, some file from Windows System32 directory. Then hooked anti open file replaces this ASIC field with LZ32.dll. Then hooked create section changes the, the size of the created section to correspond the size of the malicious payload. Then the hooked anti-map view of section function, again, changes the size of the payload and copies malicious payload into the file. And then, anti -query sec then hooked anti-query section will compute the difference between actually loaded the image base and preferred image base. It, 
and when it is not at the preferred image base, that it returns this, this error, that stat status image not at base, and the loader rebases and loads the de dependencies. So the stealthy loader loads in a way that if you parse this PEB LDR data structure, it tells you that ASIC field the DLL file was loaded. If you run process monitor, it tells you that LZ32 DLL was loaded, but in the reality, in the reality, none of them was loaded. It was the malicious payload, which is in this case the second stage, the dropper. The dropper drops just DLL file and two bitmap files, so nothing interesting here. This, the third stage is the basic loader, which searches for previously dropped bitmap files. These bitmap files are, as you can see here, very small, like 30 ta 33 times 11 pixels. With an overlay, there are encrypted, uh, encrypted uh, next stages. It, decry it decrypts them, runs them. Stage four is core, which runs lo logging thread, which logs all the information about, about uh, progress of running the, the, the puppet loader and there are like a list of supported uh, command line arguments. You can notice that sometimes there are like typos, like instead of invoke, there is invoke, and so on. Fifth stage is the main backdoor, supporting the main like tip typical backdoor functions. CNC communication is via UDP, UDP, and again, RC4 encryption, the float encryption, and the, the key is here here randomly generated and sent within the data stream. Now we will continue with another interesting malware, which is ORAT, written in Golang. We have seen it compiled under Windows and Mac. It has some configuration, which is in overlay, which is encrypted. After decrypting, you can see the information like local, uh, like, like type of encryption, uh, CNC encryption, CNC address, if it is used as traffic forwarder or not. It runs the local server, so the, the attacker has to or can connect directly to, this, to the infected machine and issue the commands. It, uh, it's implemented via something called the registered routes, so there are like, these are the list of paths which are supported by the backdoor and the, th the threat actor basically goes to this, for example, to the URL address slash agent slash info to get information about the machine. If he wants, for example, screenshot, then he calls slash agent slash screenshot and so on. And on the right, there is the example like in, in Golang, how simple it is to, to write th this type of code. Also, we will, I will mention like two, two families for Linux, which are somehow interesting. These are like Xnode and HelloBot. They are like not new. They have been seen before or reported before, not, not reported to use for espionage features, uh, espionage ta uh, goals. They, are, they have also like typical red features, but for us, what is interesting, they are interesting configuration files, which are usually simply encrypted with with XOR, they contain lots of simplified Chinese commands, and then they also contain some identifiers on some nodes usually related to gambling. Also, like one interesting thing about these two families is that there is like one, one special file with this strange name, and it tells that, that the machine is already infected by X node. But when this is, but when this is noticed by the hello bot, the hello bot runs this command f user minus k something, which, which finds out which processes are, are opening or touching this file, and if it finds them, the, the hello bot kills the instances. So it shows that either, either before the threat actor used, used x node and then updated to hello bot and wanted to kill the previous instances, or there are some competition for, for the resources with maybe some other group. So now let's talk a bit about the targets. So we used three sources to find targets. Uh, first one was, of course, our telemetry, but also we used the previous malware configurations that we discussed, and we also found some key logs that were generated by 
malware related with this threat actor, and we found them in the wild, so we could analyze them. So quick word about the telemetry. Uh, the, we got more hits coming from China. Actually, there were downloads of the fake flash downloader. But we also found some hits from the US. But we know that they all came from that legitimate website, which was actually uh, uh, oriented to our Chinese community. And the other hits were from Hong Kong, Malaysia, and Taiwan. Then about the, the key logs that we could analyze, we could identify some of the, the victims based on some of the content of those key log files. And so they, we found two Chinese gambling uh, companies, websites actually, on one Malaysian hosting provider. And the last, the configuration files, as we mentioned, there were some kind of campaign identifiers or notes, and we found some, of, some words that might refer to the targets or the campaign. A few examples, for example, there's Yabo, which is a huge, huge gambling website. Same for W888. There is some game books that might be actually Shanghai-based gaming company, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so the targets are mainly in China, but also in some other Southeast Asian countries and US. We found out the main targeted industry is gambling, but not limited to that. So we've also found one company in education, two companies in IT services, and one company in electronics manufacturing. So now let's discuss a bit the infrastructure. Uh, so I say here it's a big infrastructure, so I think this is in terms of APD groups, because this morning we saw infrastructure that were like thousands of, <laughs> of servers, so this is kind of ridiculous, but in APT it's quite big, like 50 uh, CNCs. And if we, you look at the domain names, we could find related subdomains, so more than 150. Uh, and there is also like 12 different uh, remote access tool families, so which means the protector has to set up 12 different backend, so the controllers, as I was were mentioned before. So this is like a lot of work to maintain all of this. We can note that uh, many of those domain names uh, um, have their IP address hidden by Cloudflare. And in some cases, we found that uh, multiple subdomains of one single root domain were linked to different malware families. So let's see an example of this. So we, there is the github.wiki website, which uh, actually uh, has this, those uh, subdomains. There are more than that, but for the example, we will just limit to these four subdomains. So if you go to that uh, github.wiki page, actually we'll f uh, f land on some uh, page that contains legitimate uh, GitHub documentation. So we found out it's an exact copy of the docs.github.com website. But then, uh, so this probably is to, to uh, lure the, any, uh, I don't know, analyst that will go to this website, maybe it will flag this domain as uh, legitimate. But then we found some uh, malware sample from HelloBot that was talking actually to a, a, a subdomain of github.wiki, so this was malicious, of course. We found that this other subdomain delivered some ORAT malware sample, which had a CNC to a third subdomain. On this same uh, d.github.wiki delivered a puppyrat malware sample, which talked to uh, the fourth subdomain of github.wiki. So you can see this is like kind of complex um, infrastructure. We even found uh, another subdomain of github.wiki that if you go there, you will find this like malware panel. Uh, so it was quite interesting. So, a uh, quick note also about the domain names. Uh, so, if you are like me and don't speak Chinese, you will just look at this and say, okay, that's like, seems like regular, le regular domain names. But in fact, if you translate them or you talk to some colleagues that speak Chinese, you'll find out that dash eight means actually big dick, that what's on Ima means I fuck your mother, and uh, shabby means asshole. So, yeah, we were wondering, is the protector trying to pass some kind of message or something? Yeah, we don't really know what's the purpose. Maybe it's a frustrated teenager. We have no idea, but it was quite funny to, to find this out. And now a word also about attribution. So this is always tricky, of course. So what, what we can say with conf high confidence is that the protector speaks Chinese language because there is like this XSS platform. It was actually we found out in the HTML code for this platform that it was downloaded from a Chinese forum. The panel itself is written in Chinese. The malware panel is in Chinese. A lot of the decrypted configuration files are in Chinese, etc., etc. So we saw all of this. In the, the, the bottom, you can see the screenshot of the controller we found, and the, the, the title is again Chinese, like Home Delivery Master Controller. 
So this, we can say we had confidence. But we also found links to non-groups, and uh, every person that works on Chinese retractors knows that it's a mess, actually. So let's see an example of this mess. Uh, I, I said that it all started with one subdomain, actually shopinchina.net, which was linked to our previous investigation, Operation DRB Control. In this investigation, the Tractor used uh, the Hyperbro malware family, and as far as we know, this malware family is only used by the Iron Tiger Tractor, also known as APT27 or Emissary Panda. So this is the first link that we, we have. Second link is that Xnote malware family. Actually, in the report from Dr. Webb from 2015, they attribute this malware family to China Z uh, group. And this group, we found uh, an Intezer blog post that attributes this group to Oper Operation PZ Chao, which is some white paper by Bit Bitdefender. I think this link is based on some encryption key for some ghost rat sample. And this Operation PZ Chao was actually also, also attributed to Iron Tiger. So we have two links to this threat actor. But we have another totally different link. So we found actually one of the PlugX DLLs was signed by a stolen certificate from the Gravity Company, which is some South Korean company, I think. And uh, this uh, company was mentioned in a blog post from Cointelligence that linked this uh, compromising but to the WinNTI group. So we have another link to another non threat actor. We also, this blog post actually also mentions a blog post from ESET, where they also mention some malwares linked to WinNTI, and they think that Gravity might be one of the compromised companies that are displaying that, that blog post, mentioning that blog post. Also, for the record, Operation DRB Control also had some links to WinNTI, actually, because we found one IP address that if we, you look at the passive DNS data, contain a domain name that was also attributed to WinNTI. So as you can imagine, this is all really messy. So we decided that, OK, these are some links that we, we want to uh, mention to the community, but we prefer to just take a, another, uh, our own threat actor. And so it will be a new name. I think it's Earth Berberock or something like that, that no one will remember, of course, but whatever. So in, in conclusion, uh, this is an advanced threat actor. So we, we showed that the infrastructure is big. They have a lot of development capabilities because they have some new malware families that are complex. They have to maintain all of these backends, so they have a lot of different malware families used. Uh, they target uh, three different platforms. Uh, and the targeting is mostly, but not limited to, gambling in industry. And we've, we show some links to some known Chinese threat actors. Some maybe last thing we, we have to mention is that gambling is, uh, very, is regulated in China, so it might make, may, may make sense for these, these countries to try to like, see which companies are in the gray zone or not complying to the rules or something like that. So, yeah. And uh, I think our blog post will be published probably now. Uh, it will be just an excerpt of the uh, Windows malware analysis, and I think the full blog post with all the other analysis will be published maybe in two weeks, something like that. So thank you, and if you have any question. Thank you. Okay, is there any question in the room about gambling puppets? Yeah, over there. Hello, uh, thanks for the great presentation. Uh, my question would be, uh, it seems that a lot of the tools you described, and definitely the activity has uh, this state nexus sense that I guess we could all guess uh, where it's coming from. Um, but I guess my question is um, whether you think there's like actually a financial motive be behind this operation and whether that could be some kind of a criminal uh, syndicate that branches out of those um, otherwise state-sponsored uh, actors. Um, I, I don't believe there might be some financial motive because, uh, well, we, we did not find, for example, any coin miner or stuff like that. And also because the previous, previous investigation, Operation DRP Control, in that case, we found that they were after the databases uh, coming from those gambling websites. So my personal opinion is that maybe it's more related to getting information about the customers of those websites, maybe. but. Honestly, we don't have the, the proof for that, so this is the, like my own feeling.
Maybe you should get a mic. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry for asking so many questions today, but <laughs> okay. excellent talk, guys. Um, I was curious, like you mentioned that uh, they use this app, that fake app, Bit BitGet, right? Yes. And you, you kind of said that uh, it kind of suggests which, uh, where the, the targets are, right? And BitGet is the, the one that has been developed, maybe used in Singapore somehow, right? I said, it, so it's related to the, the targeting, but we're not, I don't say BitGet got targeted. Or, actually, we don't I, have the infection vector for, for this, this uh, how, how it was delivered, we, we don't know. Yeah, I understand. Maybe not the, van, not the developer of BitGet, but uh, you suggested that this is linked to Singapore, and maybe the targets could be there as well, right? Yeah. So yeah, like, uh, like in China, in Singapore, uh, online gambling is actually restricted. It's a criminal offense. Um, so there are probably no non, or maybe like low targets uh, when it comes to online gambling. However, BitGet is uh, the application used for uh, cryptocurrency and crypto assets trading. So I wonder if you saw any nexus to uh, the cryptocurrency businesses being targeted within this campaign or none at all? Honestly, no, we, we did not see that. But, but yeah, we, we have limited telemetry and yeah, maybe we missed something. I mean, it, it cannot be excluded that they are targeted too. It's the last question. Um, hello, really nice talk. Just uh, uh, one question. When I've looked at the configuration that you show in the slides of some of the malware, they were communicating directly outside an, of a network on some non-standard port, which usually is not exactly, usually is not um, something that will go nice in a, in a company if you are inside you, you, you mean this screenshot? Yes, exactly. So is it targeting individual? on non-protected network, or is it targeting uh, um, people inside the company? Like, yeah, like, we, we, we don't know, but is, we had no hits on this uh, specific malware family, so we, we, don't, we don't found any ORAT uh, hit in our telemetry, so we cannot say uh, who was targeted by this. So, but, but it was delivered, actually, by um, one of the infection vectors I mentioned, so. Yeah, uh, yeah, but I think you are right if they must be targeting probably some network which doesn't like filter this untypical port because like I agree if these ports are blocked then it would, wouldn't work for them so it, it must be like it, it must uh, confirm what you are saying. Okay. Okay, thank you very much.